Thank you very much. Uh, just try. Okay, there we go. Uh, so thank you. Uh, thank you for introducing me and giving me the floor. My name is Patience um, Shamiri Kujwanda. I am going to be presenting on the marketing and advertising of sugary food products to children on television in South Africa. This is uh, work that I did for my uh, Masters of Public Health uh, thesis. Uh, when I was at the University of Wits and Priceless SA. Currently, I work as a consultant at a um, management consulting firm called Genesis Analytics, and I work in the health practice there. Okay, so just as a brief background, uh, the other colleagues on the line have already spoken to this. So just to say the study really uh, is the background of it is looking around childhood obesity, how there's high prevalence in South Africa um, and how it's attributed to lifestyle factors such as physical inactivity and dietary patterns. In terms of sugar and sugar intake, uh, the recommended intake of sugar in, in the world, rather, by the WHO is 5% of the daily calorie uh, intake, which is 25 grams. However, in South Africa, the average person consumes 99 grams of sugar, which is four times higher than what is recommended, making South Africa the eighth world, ranked eighth worldwide for large sugar consumption. And of concern is childhood overconsumption of sugary foods, which is a very complex issue that has both social and environmental influences. In terms of media influence, so media has been used to market foods to children. Um, and this is one of the factors that has proven to contribute to children's diet and the types of foods that they prefer. So the mechanisms used for persuasive marketing include the use of premium offers and promotional characters. This is things like cartoons, for example, and animated characters, emotional appeals, um, use of children as message source, as well as representation of um, play in, in the media, and then also production effects. So things like music, bright colors, shape in the marketing of these materials, which is very visually appealing and stimulating to children. Um, so in terms of television, television has been used as an advertising medium and it's the main advertising medium to market to children. Uh, a lot of the marketing occurs uh, on TV and usually targeted to children aged three to 11 years. Uh, and for example, things like watching one hour of TV has been shown to increase a child's likelihood of consuming unhealthy food. Um, and obviously you have evidence that is suggested there's an association between the amount of time spent watching TV and consumption of an energy dense diet that compromises our sugary food products. So in South Africa, um, there are some regulations with regard to um, the food that children consume. Um, so for example, there's a draft regulation uh, called the R429. And this one states that no unhealthy food may be advertised on radio or TV between the hours of six to nine, irrespective of whether that advertising is published outside of children's programs. And then recently there's been the white paper on audio and audiovisual content services. And this one basically states that the regulator must make regulations in respect of scheduling of advertising of things like alcoholic beverages all foods that are high in salt and sugars and fats um, during, for example, children's viewing as well. And then the big one here is that there's also a, a pledge that was signed by the Consumer Goods Council of South Africa. And in this pledge, uh, in the council, sorry, uh, some of these um, organizations that you might know uh, that I've put over there, and they basically uh, pledged that uh, they won't advertise food and beverages uh, or any food beverage products to children 12 years or younger uh, on television uh, during any time. However, as you would know, industry pledges or industry self-regulation really is not policy. Therefore, it's up to them whether or not they will uphold the pledge. So given this background, uh, the research question we had was how are sugary food products marketed to children on television in South Africa? The aim of the study was to investigate the advertising landscape of sugary food products during children's television viewing times in South Africa. Uh, and our objectives included looking at the frequency of ads for sugary foods, uh, describing them, and then describing the advertising mechanisms and techniques and characteristics that are being used to advertise these sugary food products to children. So we recorded 
uh, viewing on two uh, free-to-air channels in South Africa called SABC1 and SABC2 during uh, 3 o'clock and 7 p.m. We chose these times because the time between 3 and 5 is dedicated to children's programs, such as cartoons. Then the time between 5 and 7 is dedicated to family programs, for example, game shows, and children are known to watch TV during both these times, alone after school and then together with their families. Um, so our recordings were for four hours a day during weekdays for a period of uh, two weeks. And we estimated that on average there are at least six commercial breaks during one hour of viewing. So our total ads that we thought we'd get would be approximately 240 ads. Um, then the data was stored uh, on the DSTV PVR and then transferred uh, onto uh, a recording device. Analysis, we had a quantitative and qualitative analysis. So we did a descriptive quantitative, very small quantitative analysis, just to look at the frequency, looking at variables such as food type, category and message source. Then for qualitative, we took all of the recordings, uh, we, we purposely selected the sugary food ones, and then we um, inductively coded them, capturing the audio, visual, as well as contextual concepts in the ads. So for the results, we got 681 ads were recorded during the two-week period. 13% of those were for food, uh, with a slightly higher percentage between 3 and 5 o'clock. And the majority of uh, the food ads were for unhealthy foods, with fast foods making up 28% of all advertisements and confectionery making up 58% in one of the channels. Um, the ads that we had for food, for example, uh, that could be classified as healthy, such as vegetables and meat, uh, only made up 2% of the ads observed during the two week period. So quite a high number. And then um, of the sugary foods uh, ad, there were 36 ads that were repeatedly aired um, displaying sugary food products during this two week period. So that made up 40% of all of the food advertisements that were shown. Uh, and SABC2, one of the channels, the higher percentage of these uh, sugary food products in comparison to non sugary ones. Um, and the majority, like I said, were aired between three o'clock and five, which is a time slot allocated to children. Um, qualitatively, we took uh, seven unique sugary food ads um, that we selected and we analyzed, looking at the me mechanism. And so the content of these ads um, was basically designed from our analysis to have been to have the aim of being persuasively interesting and attractive to individuals in their audience. And in this instance, the audience were children and we refer to these as appeals. So you will see here, there was, for example, the appeal to de the desire for social connection, the appeal to emotions, appeal to the concept of taste and enjoyment, appeal to the concept of physical strength. And all of this was done using uh, audio and visual tools. So an example here of an appeal, uh, for the desire of social connection, uh, which we describe as uh, the appeal to the individual's dis um, desire for, yeah, to have a connection, basically. Uh, so some connections displayed, for example, were things such as affection, sharing, as well as the concept of relationships and friendships. So this picture is from one of the ads where, you know, they're holding a, a sugary beverage. Uh, they're a group of friends, they're laughing, they're dressed in colorful clothing. Um, and so using these tools of color, of light, of laughter, of music, of successful friends doing something on a bright sunny day, living with the colorful beverages, happy with the jingle in the back, uh, that definitely is a way of, you know, enhancing or playing to the appeal for uh, social connection and social desire. Another appeal here was the appeal to the connection of, to the concept of taste and enjoyment. So in this ad, you will see this is man, he's uh, in a group of children, he's having a, a, a lollipop and um, um, basically when he eats it, you know, there are all these bubbling sounds, all those stars that you can see, the background is colorful. So therefore using such things like that, animation, shapes, um, as well as these food products uh, and the product display, definitely then uh, gives the sense of enjoyment uh, of this, uh, the taste of the food. There were other examples here of other ads that I didn't go into. Uh, so just generally as a discussion, um, basically in terms of advertising frequency and viewing times, it is encouraging that compared to other high mid income countries, the frequency of food ads that children are exposed to in South Africa is lower. Um, 
However, it hasn't decreased over the past seven years. And on SABC2, close to 80% of the food ads that were aired during that time slot dedicated to children were for sugary foods, which is concerning. Um, and also just to say another sort of mechanism that was uh, displayed, uh, which is of interest, is the use of phrases that can be categorized as health claims. So things like, you know, saying nourish you great or helps you stay active and alert which is misleading um, and causes positivity bias because consumers then will think they can buy, um, you know, this, this food because it's healthy, whereas it really isn't. And it's full of lots of sugary um, elements. And then just another interesting point of discussion is the use of social media. So um, a lot of industry has definitely moved to, you know, from television is also going to digital marketing and various social media platforms. Um, and one of the ads here had this thing where you could then go onto YouTube to continue to engage with the sugary products. And this use of such a tag is, is, is to get children to engage something that they're familiar with, right? Um, and this elicit further brand loyalty uh, and is heavily engaging. And a lot of the um, social media has been used for things such as videos, contests, downloads, and sites. And this, again, is another further technique. And then lastly, um, with the South African regulation, basically, although I would just say here because of time, although we have all of these sort of policies and drafts that are there, they are still drafts, they are still um, in, you know, not, not official documents yet. So therefore there's no regulation, it's not binding. Um, most of the language that is used is also very vague. Um, and we can learn from other countries and the policies that they have used and maybe hopefully South Africa will, will go in that direction soon. One goes the limitations, but just to say in conclusion, um, that exposure to sugary food products through marketing and advertising has played a great role in children's unhealthy dietary choices. Although we have industry self-regulation to reduce television advertising, it is still happening, so it's ineffective and there needs to be actual policy. And that it's important that the government legislates to stop um, children's exposure to unhealthy food products, particularly on TV and on emerging social media platforms, and that there must be additional specific limitations on the use of persuasive marketing techniques when adver advertising to children. Yes, thank you. I think I will stop there. And thank you for your attention. <laughs>